Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I believe God has got a word for you today. A word that's going to lift you up, it's going to encourage you, and set you free. I want you to stay tuned after this word, and we're going to come back and pray with you and believe God to move anything in your life. And if you need to give your heart to Jesus, we're going to pray with you to do that as well. So stay tuned and be blessed. On this Wednesday night, amen. It's good that you've got a place to come and refuel, get renewed in the word, amen, for the remainder of the week. And, uh, Amen. Tonight, um, we're going to continue to talk about identity. Just this mic, just a little bit more. How many has been blessed on this Wednesday nights? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. This will be identity part three. Um, we're actually going through the book of Ephesians. If you want to turn to Ephesians and stand for the reading of the word tonight, I'm actually just going to read one scripture um, uh, in my preparation time, in my study time. One scripture is all I got through. So uh, we're going to look at verse 8 tonight. So just stand for the reading of the word. and We're going to read one scripture. We'll go back in and read uh, the rest of the chapter. But uh now, eh, let's read it now. Hallelujah. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. All right. Hallelujah. And uh, appreciate. John did a wonderful job earlier. Amen. We're going to work him into the rotation on Wednesdays. And he told me that the Lord opened the door for him to do every, every Sunday night at the prison. For now, for now, he's going to be doing every. He, wa he was rotating with somebody. Right. Praise the Lord. The Lord's. Amen. God's doing a thing, ain't he? Hallelujah. Amen. And so uh, Ephesians chapter one. And it's good to see Brother Roger with us tonight back there. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God, our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we've already talked about that part of our identity is we are blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And these are spiritual blessings. Not We're not talking about uh, money, cars, and houses, and things of that nature, though uh, this can result in that. But we're talking about spiritual blessings, power, wisdom, authority, uh, actually wisdom is what we're going to talk about tonight, but authority and, and divine protection and all of these things. Hallelujah. And then it says, according hath, as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. So we already talked about we're chosen. Amen. Say that I'm chosen. Hallelujah. You're not a reject. You're not an accident. You were actually chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. That means before anybody was choosing you or chose to have you or chose to be around you, God chose you. Amen. Amen. So that's, that's really what matters. Amen. You are chosen that you should be holy. Everybody say, I'm holy. I'm holy. Amen. And without blame. Somebody say, with Say it. Yeah, hallelujah. This is part of your identity. Without blame before him in love. And we said not without sin, but without blame. You might have some sin, but God is not blaming you. Not in that he's not blaming you that, that sin wasn't your fault. That sin was your fault. Hallelujah. Sin is a choice. But he's not blaming you in the sense he's not charging you with it. Isn't that good? He charged Jesus with your sin, made him pay for it, past, present, and future. So now God doesn't come to you, and I keep wanting to reiterate this. I think it's a very important point that God doesn't come at you as a judge ready to strike you dead and throw you in hell when you sin. 
When you sin as a believer, he comes at you as a father to his child to correct you, amen, to chastise you through the word. But if you won't listen to that, then you'll have to go through some things. How many took that route? John was talking about it earlier tonight. Amen. Amen. You'll learn one way or the other. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, uh, we've been chosen, verse 4, to be holy and without blame before me, love. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Everybody say, I'm adopted. But not like the world's adoption. Amen. That word we said means to be made sons. You've been made a son. When you're adopted in the world, uh, you become somebody's son according to the government, but your DNA stays the same as your biological father, not in the kingdom. When you get adopted by God, your DNA changes, and you become his son. Hallelujah. Because you're born from his seed. Amen. Everybody had a new birth in here. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Somebody say, I'm accepted. Amen. So that's all the stuff that we've taught on. Uh, on and then verse 7, in whom we have redemption. Everybody say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now, how long are, are you temporarily redeemed or are you eternally redeemed? You're not redeemed till the next time you sin. Amen. You're eternally redeemed right now. Jesus obtained eternal redemption when he went back into the holies of holies and put his blood on the mercy seat. So we are eternally redeemed. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we talked about all of these things. This is part of our identity as the believer. And uh, now we're going to look in verse 8. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. I couldn't get no further than verse 8. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8. Let's read it out loud together. Ready? Read. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing flow, God, in this house. God, break every chain, destroy every yoke through the word, God. Let us leave out of here changed, uplifted, encouraged renewed in our minds. We bind every devil and demon on assignment, God, uh, to hinder this word, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your word, God. And we thank you that it's not going to return void unto you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So we're talking about identity, and we're in Ephesians 1 because Ephesians 1, as we've been studying, uh, it tells us, describes for us pretty detailed uh, who we are as a born-again believer. And we've said, and as we read through this, we read through it tonight, and we've taught on this, all of these verses are in past tense. Yeah. Amen. You have obtained, you have redemption. You are chosen. Uh, you are adopted. Amen. You are blessed. All of these scriptures that we read speak of our identity, and it's in the past tense because it's something that's already true about us. We are already all of these things, and you might say, well, I don't feel like all of these things. That's because your true identity is in your spirit, man, your newborn again spirit. We're a triune being, right? And the only part of us that got saved and redeemed is our spirit. So when we look into the Word and it tells us who we are, it's describing who we are in the spirit, our soul and our body is unredeemed. Those parts of you have to be uh, renewed and retrained and reconditioned and brought under subjection to who you are in the spirit. So the place that we've been saying that you grow as a Christian is not in your spirit. You're full grown in your spirit. When you got born again, you, was, you got up off of that altar of salvation a full grown child of God with everything that you need in you, with, every, with, with all the righteousness you're ever going to have, all the holiness, all the power, all the authority you're ever going to have, you got it when you got born again. Now you've got to get a revelation of what you already are. That happens in the soul, 
in the mind because what, what is in the soul, and I'm going to say this probably every time we teach on identity, what is in the soul? In the soul is your mind. That's your mind, will, and emotions. And in your mind is your thinking. It's the area of reason. It's where your self-perception lies. It's where your self-image is. And what does Proverbs 23, 7 say? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So as, as you see, as you think that you are, that's what you're going to be. So if you, you can be saved and never walk out the benefits of that salvation, never walk in the authority of it, never walk in the deliverance of it, and just look like somebody that ain't even saved and maybe think that you're not saved. Amen. But it's because you have not renewed your mind and changed your perception of who you are. Amen. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as you renew your mind, it transforms you, transforms your uh, emotions, it transforms your desires, it transforms your words, it transforms your whole being, your character. We taught on here one time about that whole detailed process, how your thoughts control your emotions, your emotions control your choices, your choices develop your habits, and your habits become your character. Hallelujah. And so it begins, though, with your thinking, how you perceive yourself. So you grow as a Christian the more revelation you get and the more understanding you get of who you are and the more you believe it. It's not just seeing it. you got to believe it. The Bible says the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. If you don't mix this word with faith and get convinced of it and stay in it till you get convinced of it, you're going to have sometimes you'll have to hear a scripture a thousand times before you get really convinced of it. Anybody witness with me on that? Amen, because this is not a textbook. You know, it's not like you read it once or twice, pass a test, and then you move on to the next book. No, we got one book right here, and we keep going back to it, and we keep studying it, and we keep hearing it until it changes our perception, until we get convinced of it, so convinced of it, the devil can't move us off of it. Amen. And that just takes time. It takes renewing. And, and two, you can, get, you can get established in the word and get to a place where you believe it and you're convinced of it. Nothing can move you. And if you get away from it for a month or two or six yeah. or seven, you'll have to go back and do the same thing over and get renewed again of it. I've been there. Hallelujah. I've gotten renewed in certain areas and then got away from that, you know, studying on that area of my life, whether it be fear or uh, some kind of uh, uh, fear about provision or fear about sickness. And, and in a season where I was really focusing on that, I got really convinced of it, and then I got away from it. I had to go back and rehear some of the same things, relook at some of the same scriptures and renew my mind to it. Amen. And so you, it's just, you're going to do that till the Lord comes back, folks. And it is what it is. Hallelujah. This, there's no magical prayers, one-time prayers, one-time services. Amen. If there was, we wouldn't need a building, and we wouldn't need to pay bills, and we wouldn't need to have lights, and we wouldn't need a preacher. Amen. If, we, if it's just a one-time, just, you know, one-time shot, and you got it done, you got it fixed, and it, no, that's, that's why we come here three times a week, and sometimes more than that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, enough of that. But anyway... <clears throat> We grow in the area of our soul and our perception. As our perception of ourselves changes, we change and we grow. Amen? Amen. So let's look at verse 8 because this is another part of our identity. Like I said, I didn't get any further than this. Um, I wish I had a more exciting message to preach tonight or, or teach, but uh, this is it. But it's something we need to hear. Amen. Sometimes it's just something you need to hear. Sometimes you don't need to run the aisles. You just need to hear it and and receive it and let it let it get in uh, rooted in your heart but anyway verse 8 said wherein he hath abounded once again that's past tense and that word abounded there means to overflow so you could say wherein he hath overflowed toward us in all wisdom everybody say all wisdom, all wisdom. and prudence Another word for prudence, we may don't use that word these days. Maybe you do. I don't know. I've never really used it, but it means understanding, understanding. And we'll, we'll, we'll uh, define that a little bit better here because there's a difference between wisdom and prudence or wisdom and understanding, and I want to 
define that for you because it'll help you see what you have been given here. But we are overflowing. This is part of our identity. This is who you are. You are overflowing with all wisdom and prudence or understanding. Not some wisdom, not some understanding, but all. What does that mean? That it is it means what it means. Amen. You've got all the wisdom and all the understanding you will ever need. You are overflowing with it as a new uh, born again believer. Hallelujah. Well, I don't feel like it, Pastor. We'll talk about that. Hallelujah. That's why I only got past. That's why I only got to this verse. So first of all, let's discuss the difference between wisdom. And prudence. Prudence, of course, we said is understanding. I'll go back and forth between those two words. Just bear with me. But but prudence is understanding and insight. Understanding and insight. Insight into something. Now, wisdom, it 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 almost sounds the same. You could, I guess you could use it as the same thing, but wisdom is really the ability to pl- apply and walk in what you understand. So when we're talking about prudence, we're talking about understanding something, having insight into something. When we're talking about wisdom, we're talking about the ability to apply and walk in what you understand. For instance, I did not uh, prepare myself, but we'll just use this. Uh, This is a, everybody know what this is? What is it? That's understanding. Understanding is, I understand what this is. Now, who knows how to use this? It's a Roku remote. Anybody know how to use it? You got a Roku TV? That's wisdom. Wisdom is I know how to take and apply what I understand and use it. Hallelujah. That's the difference between wisdom and understanding. You have, as a born-again believer, you have all wisdom and prudence. You have all the understanding and insight you need, and you have all of uh, the knowledge and ability to apply that understanding and insight into your life. Hallelujah. So when it, when it comes to Ephesians 1 and 8, what we're overflowing with is we're overflowing with God's wisdom and understanding. God's wisdom and understanding, which is all the wisdom and understanding we'll ever need. It's, it's the only wisdom and understanding you really need, and you got all of it. Hallelujah. First uh, Corinthians 1, 9 says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The wisdom and the understanding of the world is, is going to be brought to nothing. It, it'll run out. It's going to fail. Come on, Amen. These politicians think they got it figured out. It, that they're they're going to fail, especially if their wisdom ain't in line with this wisdom. It's going to fail. We already seen that. It's already been failing. Hallelujah. And and so, but God's wisdom and God's understanding will never fail. When you have when you have this wisdom that we're talking about in Ephesians, and when you have that understanding, that will never fail you in life. So we're overflowing. I'm talking about your identity. We're overflowing with wisdom and understanding. Now, here's where you got to see. We're, we're overflowing with, with understanding or insight into the vastness of God's grace toward us, and we're overflowing with the wisdom of how to apply that grace to our lives and situations. This is what you're overflowing with. God's grace toward us has, through the person and sacrifice of Jesus, provided us with everything we'll ever need in this life and the life to come. How many believes that? Well, prudence or understanding is the insight into what grace has provided, and wisdom is the understanding of how to apply what grace has provided for our lives. So what does that mean? Well, Prudence is that I understand that grace has provided me healing. And wisdom is I know how to believe and pray in order to receive that healing or cause someone else to be healed. 
Prudence is, I understand that grace has provided provision for me. And wisdom it is, I know how to unlock that provision through my tithes and offerings. And, and I know how to use that provision to bless others and glorify the kingdom so I don't end up in lack again. Amen. Are you understanding this? Hallelujah. Um, Acts, let me give you some act, let me give you some scriptures. Acts 19, uh, 1 through 3, it says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having, let's see, passed through uh, the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Talking about John the Baptist. So if these men were baptized under John's baptism, then they had probably heard what John preached, that there's one coming after me, Jesus, hallelujah, that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. John was baptizing them in water, but he said, Jesus is coming. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So most likely they heard that the, that, that the Holy Ghost was coming. They heard about the Holy Ghost, but they had not yet heard that it had been poured out. Maybe they wasn't familiar with what happened in the upper room. Are you following me? So when Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe, this was prudence. This was understanding to them. This was understanding that he was giving them that the Holy Ghost has come. So they, they got understanding there, didn't they? Now, verse 4, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, same, Acts chapter 19, verse 4, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. This is wisdom. Because now they knew how to apply the Holy Ghost and work the Holy Ghost that had been poured out. Are you following me? So first, Paul gave them understanding. The Holy Ghost has come. Then they got baptized in it and started speaking in tongues and prophesying, and now, that they, now they know how to apply the Holy Ghost that has come. Amen. Are you seeing this? Matthew 28 and 18, just giving you some examples of what it is to have wisdom and prudence or wisdom and understanding. Matthew 28, 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, now, this is post-resurrection, Jesus. This is a post-resurrection uh, uh, time when Jesus uh, appeared to his disciples and, and, and spoke to them and and taught them before he ascended back to the Father to go set at his right hand. It says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, and that word power in the Greek is exousia, which means authority. He said, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus is saying to them, I now have all authority in the heavens, and I have all authority in the earth that at one time was turned over to Satan through Adam in the garden. Jesus went to the cross, died for, for Adam's sin and his rebellion, and got up on the third day and got all of it back for mankind. Amen. And so uh, this is prudence. This is understanding. This is insight into what grace has done. But this prudence, this understanding that Jesus gave them that he has all authority in heaven and earth, he took it all back from the devil, it does them no good without wisdom because what do I do with this understanding that all authority belongs to Jesus? Well, he gives them wisdom here. Verse 19, go. Go ye therefore because I have all authority in heaven and earth. Go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he says, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Who's with us? The one that has all authority. So if the one that has all authority goes with us, then guess what we go with? 
Uh, we go with all authority. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go, we go with authority. So what's he giving them here? He's giving them wisdom to know how to apply their, uh, yes, it's raining, it's, it's loud, it's hitting the tin roof. Everybody good? All right, let's, let's keep going. All right, hallelujah. So he's now giving them wisdom to know what to do with this understanding. Now that you understand I have all authority, now go and walk in that authority and teach with that authority and baptize with that authority and bring people from the darkness into the light with that authority. Amen. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Uh, Luke 10 and 19, he says, Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power. And that word power there in the Greek is exousia again, which means authority. He says, I give unto you power or authority to tread on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. You have power over all the power of the enemy. Somebody say amen to this. There's nothing that the enemy has, uh, there's nothing he can do that is more powerful than you. Amen. I didn't get a lot of amens, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Uh, he says, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is understanding. This is understanding that we have all power over the power of the enemy. This is understanding and insight into the fact that there's nothing the enemy can do to hurt us or harm us. Now, look at Mark 16 and 17 because he says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. That's not talking about uh, uh, taking up snakes in church like you've, you've heard and seen some do. Hallelujah. That's talking about uh, divine protection. Uh, when, when Paul uh, was putting wood on the fire and the snake jumped out and bit him, he shook it off. It's just saying you're going to be protected from serpents. That can also be referring to spirits. Spirits are, are referred to as serpents. Uh, but you will take them up. You'll have authority over, over them. He says, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's protection for what you eat and what you drink. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is wisdom. Understanding is you have all power over the enemy. Wisdom is knowing how to use that power You'll cast out devils. You'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You'll speak with new tongues. Amen. So Jesus was giving them understanding and uh, wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And you have it all. Amen. You have it all. Whatever, you, whatever this Bible has given you through the grace of God, you have all the understanding of it and you have you have all the wisdom to know how to walk in it. There is nothing in this Bible, there's nothing grace has provided you that this Bible reveals that you shouldn't be able to know or know how to walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm about to get happy whether you are or not. Hallelujah. Set on me like a Baptist or a Presbyterian. Hallelujah. I'm about to get excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing in this Bible that will ever escape my ability to understand it and know how to walk in it and apply it. My goodness, folks. Woo, thank you, Jesus. That ought to excite you. You know what that ought to make you do? Let me find out who I am. Let me find out what I can do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got to read the Bible again. Well, if you go into it like that, oh, they want, you know, it's always talking about reading the Bible. I hate reading. If, well, you go into it with an attitude like that, you're going to hate it. But if you go into it with an attitude of, man, everything in here, hallelujah, is something I can do, and God will give me the, uh, I got all the understanding of what I have, and I got all the wisdom to know how to apply it, hallelujah, let me get in here and find out. There's nothing that God will withhold from your, from, from your understanding, and, and there's no, nothing that you can do that God will withhold from you. Finding out, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
You have all prudence and you have all wisdom for every situation in your life. You have all prudence and you have all wisdom for every situation in your life. Prudence and wisdom will always work together for every situation in your life. Whatever you go through, wisdom and prudence will work together. These two things. Moses, Moses, (laughs) prudence was or understanding was God's going to deliver us today at the Red Sea and the enemy, the Egyptians, we shall see them no more forever. That was prudence. Wisdom was, stand still, Moses. Fear not, Moses. Stretch your rod out over the sea and go forward on dry ground. Amen. And through wisdom and through prudence, he did that. And then the water collapsed on the Egyptians and drowned all of them. And then uh, Miriam broke out her tambourine and started playing it and singing and rejoicing and dancing. And they had church on the other side of the Red Sea. Amen. You have all wisdom and prudence for every situation in your life. Joshua, prudence was, I have given you the city of Jericho. It's already yours. Matter of fact, it was yours uh, when I made a blood covenant with your forefather Abraham when he didn't even have a child and he, he was called out of the Ur of Chaldees and he was over there worshiping the moon and the stars and all of that stuff that, and all of that astrology and I called him out and I told him I was going to birth a nation out of him and here you are leading that nation and I've already given you the city. It's already yours. That was understanding. That was prudence. But wisdom was march around it, hallelujah, And on the last time you march around it, blow the ram's horns and shout and the walls will come down and take your army up in there and take out all the men, women, and children, hallelujah, and and, and conquer it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout it. I say I have all wisdom and prudence. Amen. Hallelujah. David, David, prudent is God will deliver this giant into my hands. He had that understanding. He had that understanding that God was going to give him victory that day with Goliath. Wisdom was go gather up five smooth stones out of the creek, hallelujah, grab your slingshot, and then go face that giant in my name and sling that stone, and I'll take that giant down and give you his head. Come on, somebody. Wisdom and understanding. Somebody let the devil know I've got all wisdom and understanding for this situation in my life. Come on, hallelujah. Whatever situation you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, there is wisdom and understanding for it, and it's yours. Amen. Amen. You have all the wisdom and understanding you'll ever need to have success in any given situation. Don't ever say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. Don't ever allow yourself, and I know this is something that we're all guilty of, don't ever allow yourself to ever be overwhelmed with anxiousness anxiousness and fear about a situation. Remind yourself of who you are, according to Ephesians 1 and 8, that I have wisdom and understanding for this situation. Whatever situation you're facing right now, whatever you face in the future, don't ever go into it with fear and anxiety. Don't ever go into it, I don't know what to do. I don't know how we're going to make it. No. That's, that's unbelief. That's not knowing who you are. That's not walking in your identity. Your identity is, I know exactly what to do for this situation. I have, I understand and know exactly what to do and how to do it. I have all wisdom and all understanding. God didn't skip over this situation. He didn't leave out this situation in my life. He didn't put a, a, a some wisdom and some understanding for some situations. And then these others, I'm just going to have to make it the best way I can. No, you have all wisdom. And understanding, that means that whatever situation I face, no matter what it is, there is wisdom and understanding in me for that. Amen. If it wasn't all, then you wouldn't, you, there would be some situations you wouldn't know what to do. God wouldn't know what to do with it. 
That's crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God knows exactly what to do, and, he's, and he knows exactly how to do it. He knows exactly what's going on, and he's given you that. Amen. In your, in your new identity. Well, well, Pastor, I, <laughs> I hear you, Pastor. <clears throat> but how come I don't understand what's going on in this situation? And how come I don't know what to do with this situation? You said I have all wisdom and I have all understanding. Well, remember that Ephesians is describing your new created spirit. Your soul is unredeemed. What you're going, when you say, I don't know, and you say, I know, but I don't know, and I don't, I don't, I, I have, I have wisdom, but I don't have, I don't know what to do with this. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know how. That's because you're identifying with your unredeemed soul. And in your unredeemed soul, you are stupid. Yeah, right. Amen. You're ignorant a lot of times. You're slow. You're a French fry short of a, of a Happy Meal. Amen. You're a chicken nugget short of a 10-piece. Hallelujah. Hey, somebody say amen. All, all of us in here, thank God for our new born-again spirits. Amen. Because when the elevator don't go all the way to the top, we got some help. Amen. So what, what's happening is you're identifying with your soul, but what you've got to do is start by faith identifying with your spirit. And even when you don't know in your soul, you know that it's somewhere in my spirit, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. It's somewhere in my spirit, and so I go into every situation, whether I know in my soul or not what to do or how to handle it or what's going on, I go into it and I declare by faith, I have all wisdom and understanding for this situation. It's in my spirit, hallelujah. But, but if you'll declare it by faith long enough, that that's in your spirit will begin to come up into your soul. Let me talk about that. That's, that's why we couldn't get no further than verse 8 because I need to talk about that. Hallelujah. Amen. So wisdom and prudence, all wisdom and prudence is not in your soul or your natural mind. It's in your born-again spirit. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to spend quite a few minutes here in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is powerful. I've been studying 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and preaching, teaching it for a long time, but, and I still see things in it, but let's, I want to start off with verse 16. It's the last verse in this chapter, but then I want to go back up to verse 9 and, and kind of work back down, but notice what it says, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but I want you to see this last part, we have the mind of Christ. Come on, somebody. How can you not know what to do, not have understanding of your situation, and not have wisdom to know what to do when you have the mind of Christ? You think Jesus ever walked up in a situation and didn't know what to do? Come on, hallelujah. He always knew exactly what to do because the mind of Christ is the mind of God. Amen. Somebody say this. I have... The mind of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not going crazy. I'm not losing my mind. Come on. Oh, I'm so forgetful. Well, that's your unredeemed mind. Amen. You're not forgetful in the mind of Christ. You're very capable in the mind of Christ. Say it again. I have the mind of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So in the mind of Christ is all the wisdom and understanding we will ever need. And we have the mind of Christ in our born-again spirit. When you got born again, you got a new mind, the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Now let's go back up to verse 9. For, because I, I, what, I'm, what I want to try to get across to you is, is this, I, this idea that I have all wisdom and understanding, but I don't have the wisdom and understanding in my mind. I can't see it, but I have it. It's in my spirit. I got to get it into my mind. So look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I, that's your natural eye, has not seen, nor ear, your natural ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man or, or has come into your mind, your natural mind. Your natural mind hasn't thought it or, 
comprehended it, the things which God hath prepared. Does everybody see that? Past tense. Hath prepared for them that love him. Do you love him? Are you in a love relationship with God? Well, he hath prepared things for you. God has prepared understanding and wisdom for every situation we go through. Do you understand that? That God's already prepared the answer. He's already prepared the way. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He's already prepared the way. The Bible says he'll make the crooked path straight. Do you know how he makes the crooked path straight? He goes before you. You know how he goes before you, makes the crooked path straight? He's already prepared the answer for you. God knows what to do before you ever come into the situation. He's, he, he is Alpha and Omega. Woo! He's the beginning and the end. He, he was in your beginning, but he was already in your end. Hallelujah. And when he speaks to you in your present, he's already seen your future. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't God good? He's got all the bases covered. He's looking at things from a different perspective than you. And he's already prepared the answer for you. He's already prepared the way. Hallelujah. That's, he told Moses. He said, Moses, you're going to go down here to the Red Sea, and the Egyptians are going to follow you, and they're going to say you're trapped by the wilderness and the Red Sea in front of you. But I'm going to get glory on Pharaoh today. Hallelujah. He's going to know who he's going to know I'm God and none of his little gods, his sun god, his frog god, his ant, his uh his, his lice god, all of his his sun god, none of that. He's going to know that I'm the real God. And he'll know it right before he dies, but right before he drowns in the Red Sea, he's going to know that I'm God. Because you're going to stretch your rod out over this. I've already planned this out, Moses. I've already prepared wisdom and understanding for the situation. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. This is turning out better than I thought it would. Hallelujah. I wasn't excited about teaching this, but I'm getting pretty excited about it now. I have to be honest with you. I wasn't really looking forward to tonight. Hallelujah. But I said, Lord, I'm your employee. I'm just going to work tonight. That's, it's, your, it's your play. It's your, it's your kingdom. I'm just working for you. Hallelujah. You know you have those days you don't really want to go to work. This was one of those days I didn't really want to go to work. But I'm glad I came. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Moses, I already got this thing figured out. I already got wisdom and understanding for you. You're going to put your rod out over the sea. It's going to part. He's going to follow you. I'll take his wheels off his chariot. He's going to crash into the middle of the Red Sea. And I'm going to collapse the waters. And, and this enemy you've seen today, you'll see no more forever. Come on, folks. Eye hasn't seen it. Ear hasn't heard it. It hasn't entered into your mind what God's already prepared for them that love him. Those of you that's been walking in a love relationship, you got to understand that God's already prepared the way. He's already got the miracle figured out. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. He's already, he already knows how he's going to open the door. He already knows how he's going to connect you with this one and that one, and that one's going to connect you with that, and this is going to connect you with that. And when you get connected with that one, finally, it's going to open up the door you need to open and the miracle's going to work out and the breakthrough's going to come. He's already got it. Amen. Hallelujah. He's already got it figured out. And so <clears throat> when you hit a situation, you know, God's got the answer prepared. Now, it hasn't entered into your mind. It hasn't entered. You haven't heard it. You haven't thought it, but he's got it prepared. Are you hearing me? Amen. But now, where was I at? Hallelujah. Look at what it says in verse 10. Verse, uh, 10 uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. That's capital S. That's the Holy Ghost. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So, the revealing of the wisdom and the understanding that's in the mind of God that we have, we have the mind of Christ, that, that, that he's already prepared and, and got, it, it's revealed to us. Now, that's past tense. He's revealed them to us by the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, 
It says, for the spirit, the Holy Ghost, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. I told you in here before, I was preaching in one of these services, in here that the Holy Spirit, I compare it to like a search engine on the, on the Internet, Chrome or one of these browsers. And what the search engine does, because it says the Holy Ghost knows all things, yea, the deep things of God, the Holy Spirit Because he searches all things, the deep things of God. He searches everything in the mind of God. Well, what's the browser on your Internet do? When you uh, type something in, it searches everything, yea, the deep things of the Internet. And it pulls up and you say one million hits on whatever you pulled up. And you can scroll till you can't scroll no more. Hallelujah. Till you just get tired of scrolling and you see everything in the mind of the internet. And that's what the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is a search engine. The Holy Ghost knows, watch me please, the Holy Ghost knows everything in the mind of God concerning you. Are you hearing me? So now it says he's revealed past tense these things unto us by his spirit. Well, I don't know the answers of, and the wisdom. Wis, no, you, you've got to understand. It's in your spirit. It's just not in your soul. See, you have this search engine now. Come on. You, I, the other day I said, you know, we was watching a show, and I was like, who is that? You ever seen an actor in a TV show, and you're like, who is that? I've seen him in something before. You ever done that? You don't know their name, but, man, they look so familiar. Well, used to, back in the 80s and the, in the early 90s, uh, well, in the 90s, too, you, you just didn't know. You called somebody, right? But now what do you do? Google. Come on. You have all wisdom and understanding to know who's in that movie because you got Google. Well, you have all wisdom and understanding to know what to do in any situation because you got something better than Google. You got the search engine of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you that can look up anything you need in the mind of God. Amen. Are you following me? You've got this supernatural ability in your spirit. You've got the mind of Christ in your spirit. And it's, and it's given you through the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost moved in, that search engine moved in. And now you are connected to everything in the mind of God. Now, do you need to know everything in the mind of God? No. Hallelujah. There's some things he don't want you to know. He said you can't know. There's some seasons and times you're not meant to know. There's some things you don't need to know. But. You have all the wisdom and understanding you'll ever need. You've, you've got access to all of it through the Holy Ghost. And there's nothing you need in order to have success that God will ever withhold from you. But it's in your spirit. You got that? Amen. It's in your spirit. It's just like, you know, that, that actor's name's not in my mind, but it is in, in Google. Got it? If I got Google, I got the name. All I got to do is look it up. So there, there are situations I go through that the wisdom and understanding for the situation is not in my mind, but it's in my spirit. So that's why I say to you, you never go into a situation saying, I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Come on, amen. You've got that search engine. You just got to get, get that search engine going and, and get into the mind of God. Are you following me? Amen. Hallelujah. So now... <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter two. Look at verse eleven. Still, in, we're still in First Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. Just leave my verses up there until I move on, because I may want to reference them again. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him? Right. Amen. There are things in me, in my heart, that I know that you don't know, but it's in, it's in my heart. Now, if I could take my spirit and put it into you, you would know what I know. Well, that's exactly what God did. 
What man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. There's no natural man that knows the things of God, knows his wisdom, knows his understanding, but the Holy Ghost does. Well, what's the next verse say? Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. What spirit? The spirit that knows all things in the mind of God. Now, why have we received the spirit of God? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Look at this God. This God says, hallelujah, here's my mind, this great mind, this all-knowing, omniscient mind of mine. I'm the creator of heaven and earth and the universe. I have all wisdom and understanding. And the, 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 the Holy Ghost knows what's in my mind. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my spirit... Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, hallelujah. I'm going to take my spirit and I'm going to put it in you. Now, notice what that says. That you might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So everything God decided or wants to give us through Christ, he says, I want you to, I'm giving you my spirit so that you might know what's in my mind concerning you. So the Holy Ghost is given to you for more than a shake, and I'm not diminishing that. Hallelujah. Because when I first come here, nobody shook. Hallelujah. Amen. I was, I was happy to get an amen from the back. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every now and then I got a clap. So I thank God for the shakers and the rollers and the floor and the jerkers. And, and, but don't limit it to that. Because he said they're the reason he gave you the Holy Ghost is so that you might know. So that you might have wisdom and understanding. Come on, hallelujah. So that you don't have to go ever go through a situation where you don't know what's going on in that situation and you don't have the wisdom on how to handle that situation. Hallelujah. So, so you don't ever walk in this life not knowing what you have and not knowing how to use what you have. I've given you my spirit so that you might know. So if all you ever do with the Holy Ghost is, is shake and roll in the floor and feel a goose bump, you are missing the whole experience. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. He's in you so that you might no, that's why he said, look at the next verse, verse 13. We're still in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul says, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Look at that, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In context, what Paul's saying here is the things that we're preaching and teaching to you are not things that man's wisdom's taught us or can teach us. He's saying these things are things that the Holy Ghost teaches. Woo! He said we're teaching the wisdom of God. We're teaching what's in the mind of God concerning us, and that's not something man can teach because man don't know it. I'm going to read that verse to you here in a minute. Hallelujah. Man can't teach that. Only the Holy Ghost can teach what's in the mind of God. Woo! Jesus called the Holy Ghost a teacher. And, and, he, and he was called a uh, in 1 John, he was called a teacher. In our born-again spirit, hear me please, in your born-again spirit is the third person in the Godhead. Do you understand that? When you received the Holy Ghost, you didn't receive some watered-down version of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You didn't receive the third cousin of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you didn't receive the little brother of the Holy Ghost. The third person in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three in one. I'm not going to try to explain the Trinity to you. I don't know that you just got to see it. Hallelujah. But I am a Trinity believer. I believe in the doctrine of Trinity. Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. Amen. And I believe we, we don't serve three different gods. 
It's one God in three different persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost embodies all of who God is. He is no different than God. He is no less. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. He's no less than God, and he lives in you. Oh, boy, that's good. That'll make a rabbit spit in a bulldog's eye if you put it in him. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. That'll make you run through hell with a water pistol. Hallelujah. If you understand the third person in the Trinity, all of who God is is all of who he is, and all of who he is lives inside. He didn't have to shrink down and become less than what he was in order to live in you. No, the blood of Jesus cleaned you up good enough that all of who the Holy Ghost is could dwell in you. In the Old Testament, he came on them, but in the New Testament, he moved in. Oh, somebody better praise God. Woo! When he moved in, he brought in the mind of God. He, he brought in what he knew, what he knows. He knows the mind of God. Say it, I have the mind of Christ. Amen. And it's in me. It's in my born-again spirit through the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. Whoo. Hallelujah. Where was I at? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And he's a teacher. Somebody say, he's a teacher. He's a teacher. And... <clears throat> So he knows all things that are in the mind of God concerning us, and he's a teacher, a teacher. Why is he a teacher? Because even though we're born again in our spirits, and in our spirits we have the mind of Christ revealed to us by the Holy Ghost, our natural ear can't hear it. Come on. And our natural eye can't see it, and our natural mind can't imagine it. So the teacher has to reveal it to us. Amen. Is this, I did a, is this too simple or everybody good? The teacher, I think sometimes we don't get taught this stuff in church. Hallelujah. We just assume everybody understands it. But he's the teacher. And what's he teaching? He's not teaching your spirit. He's teaching your soul, your unredeemed soul, who you are in your spirit. And he teaches you what's in the mind of God that your eye can't see, your ear can't hear, your mind can't comprehend. He teaches it to you. There, there, there are many ways. This is called revelation. Everybody say revelation. revelation. I'm going to teach on revelation in this, in this teaching. I'm going to talk about revelation more in depth. But there's many ways to get revelation. You get it through anointed teaching and preaching. The Bible says you don't need a man to teach you. That doesn't mean you don't need a pastor. What that means is you don't need a natural man giving you rules and regulations and principles of how to live your life. The, uh, the Bible says, in John, I should have put, I should have given you that scripture. That's 1 John 2 and I think it's 27. And it says, you need not that a man teach you anything, but the anointing shall, uh, talking about the Holy Ghost, shall teach you of all things. Doesn't mean you don't need a man teaching you. What it means is you need an anointed man or woman teaching you that's operating under the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Sean Campbell's not the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Come on, if I didn't have the Holy Spirit tonight, this would have been the most boring message you've ever heard in your life. You'd have been like, good Lord, I wish this guy would shut up. I'm miserable tonight. But we'll get in here and y'all will holler more and you'll want more because the Holy Ghost is the greatest teacher. So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, te he's the teacher. So you get revelation through anointed teaching and preaching. You get revelation through the gifts of the Spirit working through somebody, prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. And you can get it through visions by the Holy Ghost, dreams by the Holy Ghost. That will give you revelation. That's how he teaches you what's in the mind of God. But the main way, church, don't get caught up on all that. Don't get caught up on all that stuff. It's great. Now, you have an anointed teacher. You have anointed teachers in this house, ministers. 
and, and, and thank God for the gifts that work in this house. Don't get caught up on all that and rely just on that because the main way the Holy Ghost teaches you what's in the mind of God concerning you is through the direct connection that the Holy Ghost now has with your natural mind. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has the ability to put thoughts and insights into your mind. In John 14, 26, Jesus says, I'm, I'm trying to hurry, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, right? Watch this. Watch what he says here. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Where's your remembrance? Where, where do you remember? In your mind, in the area of your unredeemed soul. And what does it say the Holy Ghost will do? He'll bring whatever the Lord said to your remembrance. So doesn't that mean that the Holy Ghost, that we have a connection between our unredeemed mind and the Holy Ghost as a born-again believer? Don't that mean that the Holy Ghost, the teacher, has access to your natural mind? So where do these thoughts come from? Out of nowhere. Huh? And all of a sudden you see things and you feel things and you understand things and you're reading the Bible and you've read it 15 times and never understood it. And you read it 16th time. On the 16th time, a light bulb went off. That's the teacher. He's got a connection with your natural mind and he can put understanding in it and he can cause you to see things you've never seen before and one of the main ways you get revelation is yes you get it through teachers yes you get it through the gifts yes you get it through visions and dreams but maybe you've never had a vision and dream that's okay because you've got the Holy Ghost in the inside of you and he can just pop a thought into your mind on the drive through at McDonald's huh he just and that's the main way. I want you to understand that. That's the main way you get revelation. That's the main way the Holy Ghost teaches you. It's just all of a sudden thoughts come up into your mind and you're like, where in the world did that come from? But it's insight and it's something you see about God and it's something you see about yourself. It's, it's, it's understanding of the scripture. You saw something and you, that's how God is. Oh, that's how I am as a believer. You ever done that? Hallelujah. And when you hear people say, well, I felt in my spirit or I heard in my spirit or I heard the Lord say, what, what that they didn't really hear a voice. What's happened is something, a thought popped up in their mind out of nowhere. And it was God. The Holy Ghost was teaching you because he's got this connection now to your mind. That's why you can't go back out into sin. And be happy. Because the convictor, the Holy Ghost, now has access to your mind and he starts putting thoughts up in there. If you've ever heard Jensen Franklin's testimony, he got saved and grew up in church and got saved and he backslid and went out and started partying and stuff in his teenage years and he said he would go get high and he'd go pop pills and he said while everybody was tripping and seeing psychedelic stuff, he was seeing visions of Abraham and he was seeing visions of Moses and he was seeing visions, come on, amen, what was happening, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost had still had access to his mind and wouldn't let, come on, amen. Come on, amen, hallelujah. You have all wisdom and prudence. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't know what, what, what to do. No, don't walk in that unbelief. You have the mind of Christ and you ha have the Holy Ghost that knows the mind of God and he's the teacher and he's got this connection with your mind and all you gotta do is just declare by faith, I know what to do. Lord, I think, just start thanking God for it. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I thank you for the wisdom and understanding for this situation. And, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost. And sometimes, sometimes it's just when you need it. Can I show you this? Ah, it's 830. I went past my time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, uh, uh, let me skip all that and let me go over here. Uh, look what he says. In, and let me show you this practically. And I'm, I'm, let me show you these how this works practically in the scriptures, and then I'm done. Luke 12 and 11, I love this. It says, 
uh, Jesus told his, his disciples, he said, when they bring you into the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, he said, take ye no thought how or what thing you shall you shall answer or what you shall say for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Look at that. So he says the Holy Ghost right in the moment, right in the situation is going to bring to your mind the things that you need to say and how you need to handle the moment. Isn't that powerful? So I like, I like how he says take no thought or don't worry. That's what that means. Don't worry about how you're going to handle and respond to these situations when they bring you before the religious uh, powers and the governmental powers because in the moment that it happens, the Holy Ghost will teach you exactly what to say. When you have all wisdom and prudence through the person of the Holy Ghost, here's the awesome thing. Hallelujah. You don't have to deal with the anxiety and the stress of worrying about situations that might arise. Come on. How many does that? You get, a, you get anxious about situations that might arise, things that ain't even happened yet, and you're worried well, none of you are ever going to have a moment. None of you probably in this lifetime, maybe not. I don't know. It's getting pretty bad. But none of you in the near, in the next few months or weeks are going to have a situation like the disciples where you're going to be handcuffed and brought before somebody that wants to crucify you or kill you. Now, that may happen before the Lord comes back in America if we're getting to that place, and I'm not saying it won't. Hallelujah. But... That's a pretty bad situation. And what did Jesus say? Don't even think about it. Just, just go on about your business. Do what you need to do for the kingdom. And just when you get into the situation, the Holy Ghost is going to show up and tell you just how to handle it. Woo, come on, somebody. Amen. And evidently the Holy Ghost told Peter to go to sleep. Take a nap. Rest. I'm going to send an angel, and he's going to wake you up and loose the chains and open the. Sometimes that's what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. I know. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But do you, do you understand my point? That because, here's, ooh, I love this. That because you have the mind of God through the Holy Ghost, you can live a carefree life. And you don't have to stress about anything because whatever you get into, the Holy Ghost is going to show up and give you the wisdom and understanding for it. As long as you remember who you are and you don't go into the situation whining and crying about what you don't know, what you don't understand, go into it with faith and say, oh, you know, I didn't see this coming, but I have all wisdom and understanding for it in the Holy Ghost. Come on. And then the, the answer will just begin to come. And the breakthrough will begin to come. Right? Right? Oh gosh, hallelujah! You, uh, just let me, l just let me, please. L you know, uh, um, um, in Acts chapter sixteen, give me the Acts chapter sixteen verses. Give me those, hallelujah! Look at this. And it, I'm, look, I closed my notes. I'm done. Hallelujah. And it came to pass as he went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, right, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Next verse. And the same followed Paul and us, crying, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation, right? Next verse. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved and turned, uh, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And she came out the same hour. Look at this. Paul, <coughs> this woman that had this demonic spirit was following his ministry. She wasn't saying nothing bad. She was saying everything she was saying was good, right? Amen. But Paul got grieved in his spirit and knew this was demonic. See, Paul had the wisdom to handle this situation. He knew how to cast the devil out. All he needed was understanding. He needed to understand that this woman was a fake, that she, was a, she, was, she had a demon in her. Come on. And what the Holy Ghost do in the moment gave him understanding. Sometimes for situations, Mom, you have the wisdom. You know how to cast the devil out. You know how to pray. You know how to command the mountain to move. But sometimes you need understanding to know what it is that you need to. 
but you have all, come on, all wisdom and understanding. <laughs> Isn't that good? Then look at this last one here. Look at this last one here. Uh, give me the Acts 27 scriptures. For he stood by me this night, the angel of God, who's like, this is when Paul was on the, uh, he was a prisoner on the ship going to Rome, and they hit the hurricane. For there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, right? And they're in the middle of this hurricane, and it looks like they're about to die on the ship. And then the angel showed up and said, fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar, right? And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee, right? Come on, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Come on, hallelujah. How be it, we must be cast up on a certain island. Come on. But when the 14th night was come and we're driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Keep going. And the, they sounded and, and, and found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. They were getting close to land. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Keep going. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boats into the sea, they let down the lifeboats, and they was getting ready to get in the lifeboats uh, under color as though they would have cast anchors out uh, of the foreship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Is that the last verse? Hallelujah. Look at this. Paul had, I believe Paul had understanding here. I believe he had understanding. God's going to take care of me. But you know what he needed? He needed some wisdom. Paul, this ship is going to have to be, I got you. You're going to get to Rome. I knew that, God, hallelujah. But this ship's going to be cast on an island. And he, and he gave him wisdom. He said, oh, and two, all these men I've given you, but they got to stay on the ship. You see that? Paul, sometimes you have understanding going into a situation. You understand God's going to take care of me. How many ever, you know that? Hallelujah. And, but how many knows that sometimes just knowing God's going to take care of me ain't enough? Sometimes you need a little wisdom. You need to know what to do. You need to know what decisions to make in the moment. Do I just stand here and do nothing, or is it, do I move and do this? Do I go talk to this person, or do I keep my mouth shut? Do I, do, do I take this money and go do this with it, or do I keep the money in the bank and just wait on God? And then, but what happens, because you got understanding that God's going to take care of it, but sometimes you, everybody know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you need wisdom. Guess what? You've got all wisdom and under. Oh, hallelujah. God never leaves you with just one or the other. Huh? You got it all. Somebody say, I got it all. Hallelujah. And it's in my spirit. Come on. Come on, it's in my born-again spirit. All right, let's stand. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. Have you received tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so let's declare who we are. I'm going to make sure I don't miss anything. Hallelujah. I want you to say this with me. I am a new created creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I have a brand new identity. And in my new identity, which is in Christ, I am blessed. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am chosen and not rejected. I was chosen in Christ. Before creation, I'm not an accident. I'm also holy and without blame. Not without sin, but without blame. I'm adopted. I've been made a son of God. My DNA has changed. My DNA is his DNA. Because I come from his seed, the word of God. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm accepted. Say it again, I'm accepted. 
Your rejection. Come on. Don't bother me. Because I'm already accepted in the beloved. What you think about me. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, what you think about me. Don't bother me. Because I already know what he thinks about me. And I'm accepted. Come on, folks, the power of life and death is in your tongue. Come on. Don't wear out on me yet. Shout it again. I'm accepted. Oh, hallelujah. Shout it. I'm redeemed. Which means my sins are forgiven. Not temporarily. Not till the next time I sin. But eternally. I'm eternally redeemed. Eternally forgiven. Woo, hallelujah. And I am overflowing with all wisdom and understanding in my born again spirit through the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. Woo, hallelujah. Say this with me. I know. What I need to do for any situation that I go through. I know what I have for any situation I go through. I have exactly what I need for any situation. And I know how to use what I have. To have success in any situation. Woo, hallelujah. Shout it again. I have all wisdom. Not some, but all wisdom and understanding. Oh, hallelujah. Now give God a praise in this house. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this word blessed you today. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, God, to move every mountain in the believer's life that's listening today. I'm asking you, Lord God, to heal, to deliver, to touch, and to set free, Father. Restore those that need restoring and renew those that need renewing, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of you today that want to receive Jesus into your heart, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again on the third day. And I ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, get in contact with us. Look uh, look us up on Facebook. Look us up on, on the web. Uh, email us. Get a hold of us. And we want to minister to you and make sure we can help you uh, further along your walk with Jesus. Until next time, be blessed.